Here we go. Back to full-on football, where of course uh, we just had our special guest Michael Carter. Fantastic to be able to speak to him, the CEO of FFSA. We've got Ben Dow from Seaford, the senior coach of Seaford, and now joining us as our next guest, uh, another guest who's visited us every year. A very loyal man, a man who's uh, a, a lovely person. Any time I just have to ask this man, he provides players, comments, anything for the club, which is fantastic for us. Um, and he's a man who stands by his coach and has for some 13 odd years or so, I'm sure he'll tell me the correct uh, uh, length of time. He's the assistant coach to Rocky Aloisi from Campbelltown City Red Devils, Carmen Loriello. Thank you Thanks. very much for coming back on. Yes, it's uh, uh, great to be back on, Natalie, and uh, I'm, uh, it's, bit, uh, it's nice to uh, know that I'm appreciated. Thank you. Oh, definitely. <laughs> very, very much. As I said, I just have to text you and you've got an answer for me straight away, yeah. which is... Fantastic. Um, Campbelltown City, last season you had a great start. You had a big loss mid-season with Paul Savio out injured. Uh, I thought you did really did miss him. Um, you also had other injuries to continue, but you managed to finish third. And then the icing on the cake was uh, Simon Catanzaro getting a joint winner of the Sergio Melter medal, you know, for the uh, Player of the Year. Yeah, we uh, actually, Paul didn't get injured. He went overseas. Oh, did he? Uh, yeah, oh, so, okay. Oh, I beg your pardon. Yeah, it's pretty unusual for Paul to get injured, mm. so he's a pretty tough character. But uh, yeah, he went overseas and he missed quite a bit of the season. That that did uh, cer certainly uh, make things a little bit more difficult in defence for us. But uh, yeah, Simon getting the award was uh, was great for Rock. I think that's the third one he's got, uh, mm. as far as you know, players under him. Mm. And we also won in the in the under 23s. We got uh, another one there with young Bubba. Um, give up, oh God, I forgot his name now. <laughs> yeah, young Bubba, he uh, did really well. So yeah, fantastic. And I do beg your pardon. I thought Janito, that Paul Bubba was Bubba Janito. I was just I thinking of someone. I thought Paul was yeah. injured, and but he'd gone overseas. Yeah, so he did. I apologise uh, for that, okay. Paul. <laughs> now, um, this season, how did you prepare for this season? What did you and Rocky talk about uh, on the areas that you you wanted to improve on? Um, we, we spoke about uh, uh, mainly working hard as a group. And I thought we achieved that in the first three or four games. Uh, we just kind of went off the boil a little bit for a couple of weeks there. Uh, the players um, were were not working as hard enough, or weren't working as hard for each other. And we addressed that last week. And, and more than anything, it was the players that took it on board. Mm. So we really have to thank the players for a little bit of the turnaround. And we just provided the platform for them and, and, and they ran with it last week. And, Hopefully that's turned it around a bit for us. So. Now, unlike a lot of the teams, you didn't have a lot of player changes, but one big change you did, a big plus, was Michael Minnekeller coming back mm. um, fit from Mobbury, fitting mm. in brilliantly to the already very strong back line that you have. Yeah, well, Michael, he's, uh, he's a very loyal person, and, and he'll probably tell you himself he was loyal to Modbury because we, uh, we wanted him at the club uh, after we moved to Campbelltown, but... He was very loyal. He, he he sticks to his promises, and he did the things that uh, he was supposed to do at Mobbury. But he always uh, insinuated that he wanted to come back at some stage and finish his time at Campbelltown. So we're we're over the moon to have him. He's mm. slotted in nicely. He's yeah, he, has. he hasn't uh, missed a beat really. Mm, no, fantastic. Now, Ben, about Seaford, you were saying it's a bit of a mixed bag so far. Um, would you say things are looking up compared to your season last year? <sighs> It's, it's, um, it's really hard to, to make a comparison, to be honest. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm looking at things quite differently now from the sidelines, whereas um, I was on the pitch last year. Mm -hmm. So, um, But uh, uh, if, if comparing my frustrations uh, to last year to this year, um, there's probably, probably no difference. <laughs> um, but uh, what, I, what I do like about this season is the fact that I can see the change in the attitude of the players. And I'm not saying that's just because of my influence, but uh, but certainly um, their um, response to my instructions, their discipline, um, and the fact that reality is is there there was a culture down there of of a losing culture, and it's very hard to change that. Mm -hmm. um, people were a little bit too accepting of conceding soft goals and, and those type of things. It's just uh, it's been accepted, and uh, uh, it was continuing to be accepted. And now we we can't we can't go down that path if we want to be. Um, competitive, mm. and not only be competitive, but start to, to get results as well. So 
I've seen that uh, that change in the in the players, and, and like I said earlier, uh, that uh, we just need to be a bit more consistent. Um, we certainly, uh, when we're on our game, we, our our first touch, our distribution, our movement, our work rate is is fantastic. Uh, it's just now, um, even with uh, you know Con in the team and Sammy Bowden, who are both in their thirties, um, the average age of the team even this week is 21, 22. So, so for me, it's good to have those young players coming through now, um, who have, a lot of them have been at the club for some years, um, to actually now step up and and want to play first team football and and take on that take on that next challenge. And um, that's uh, I find that uh, quite a positive in the in the way they've responded to me. And when they are playing, like I say, when they are on their game, just how actually, um, uh, what's the word, how good it looks from the sidelines yeah. to me, it's, 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 it's really good. Now, I said you're a man that has initiatives for the club. Now, you brought in a, a special guest speaker to speak to the boys a couple of weeks ago. How did that go and who was that and let us know all about that? Um, I wanted to actually uh, get uh, a friend of mine and uh, essentially an ex-coach of mine, uh, Neil Fuller, who... Um, who, uh, as a lot of people would know, um, played for Para Hills um, when he was uh, 17. Uh, he made his first team debut and was uh, became a, a consistent first team player there for a period. And I think he, he went away with the, the youth state team. Uh, and when he came back, I believe he was playing a game on the bench, uh, broke his leg, everyone knows the story. Mm. But uh, what, what uh, I found um, sort of uh, motivational uh, for me was is when I first came to Para Hills as a junior and uh, playing under 15s, um, Neil was there playing you know, amongst us and just having a bit of a muck around kick and stuff like that and it wasn't even until after training that I realised he uh, had one of his legs amputated. Mm. So um, that was quite inspirational, I thought, to think, gee, you know, he's uh, not letting that stop him from, from what he's doing and, and obviously he's gone on to, to uh, win gold medals in the Paralympics and, and all those types of things. So um, I remember one story in particular when he mentioned he, one of his events was the long jump and um, the strap on his leg had actually broken in, in one of his first jumps and he, 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 could have, he had to make a decision at the time, do I, do I keep competing with the, with the strap broken or do I just give up after all the training I've done and he continued to do it regardless. Um, and uh, just little things like that. For me, I, I, certainly, I, I love those sort of things. I love motivational movies mm -hmm. and, and, and things like that but this is a, a real life story who, and the person had a part to play in my life when I was younger. So. I thought at least getting to come down, talk to the players, and if they can at least get half of what I got out of it, um, then maybe they might start to you know, see that you know that they can't continue to make excuses and that they've got to be responsible for their for their own actions. And Neil actually came uh, and saw us on the Sunday following our first game of the season against NAB, and uh, the major well, most of the lads were there as well as some of the juniors, and um, it was very uh, it was a very good day, and a lot of people got a lot out of it. Mm. Um, I wish I could actually have him down there probably a bit more often because he came down and followed up the following week, mm. came into the change rooms before the game, and um, we won three nil. Mm. <laughs> so um, you know, uh, it was it was it was for me it was uh, it was it was really really good, especially um, like I say to have been involved with Neil when I was younger, and then to be able to ha have him back and and see what impact that had on the, on the other players. And sometimes sometimes you need to do something like that to be able to bring the best out of your players because you know I mean coaching is coaching, but if you're able to get someone like that out, it's fantastic and well done for doing that. Uh, of course, we had the the round three FFSA Cup this weekend, last weekend, guys. So. Uh, um, some very, very interesting results. Uh, I'd like to have a look at those results now if we can. And um, we had uh, Western Strikers defeated Enfield City 1-0 with Mascara scoring the goal there. Metro Stars well and truly uh, making a meal out of the berries. 7-0 uh, defeating Salisbury United. Uh, Tunbridge, Scotty Tunbridge scoring a hat-trick. Uh, James Young, Costa. Matriciani and Peroni all scoring singles there. Raiders went down to Adelaide City 1-0, only the one goal, uh, uh, Nick Budin scoring that one. Blue Eagles came out on top against Adelaide Olympic uh, with a 3-0 win. That was uh, Ricardo De Silva and Orfiero and an own goal there. Pirates, very, very strong, um, sorry, missed one there. Cumberland went down to Mobbery. 1-0 uh, with Scotty Gannon, um, your ex-player there, yeah, uh, Carmen, doing, doing scoring well. for Mobbery and doing very well for Mobbery. Pirates 3, Sassy 1, getting over the top of the young guys there. Uh, Skeffington and Totoli sco and uh, Ailing scoring for Pirates and Chris Peppy scoring for Sassy. 
Um, Panthers, very, very strong match and strong win here over Norlunga, 4-0. That last time they matched up, it was a 3-4, uh, sorry, 4-3 win to Panthers. So this was a 4-0 win to Panthers with uh, Wilkinson scoring a brace, Tor and Mahoney. And then, of course, your match, uh, Campbelltown City 4, Adelaide Galaxy 0, a huge win. Trimboli and Catanzaro scoring the two goals. And it was a very, very different match from the last time that you guys played because it was touted as a grudge match. 